What did the Bills prove to themselves and everybody else on Sunday in Foxborough? Plus, what happens to Isaiah McKenzie when Cole Beasley returns? And the good, the bad, and the ugly of potential Bills playoff matchups. That all comes up on this week's edition of the Buffalo Plus Podcast. Welcome back to the Buffalo Plus Podcast presented by Connors and Ferris, Mike Catalana, Dan Fates. I'm Jenna Cottrell. We're going to talk all about this Bills win over the Patriots, what it means for this team. We are also going to talk about New Year's resolutions, what we expect from the Bills in terms of that. We'll talk a little bit about what happened in New England, uh, football aside for Bill Belichick. We'll get into it all. But first, Mike, let's start with you. What did this Bills team prove after their win in Foxborough Late December with the AFC East first place on the line. What did what did that win say? I think they proved something to themselves. I really do. I think this team, I won't say lost confidence. They lost that air that they had last year, which they take the field. And we've talked about this a lot, where they dictate to the other team. They say, this is who we are. We're the Bills, and we're going to do this. And I think they got that back. I think they got it. And I'll use the term. You hear it all the time a little bit of swagger. I think they got back who they are and the team that can scare other teams in the NFL. A little bit in that second half in Tampa, but they lost. This time, I think they got it back, and I think they needed it as a team. I think they showed us or proved to us that they were the team that they've told us they were all season long. They they have told us they were this physical team that that can do all of these things and it's kind of been a lie like they sit there and they're like well you know we're not that we weren't that team from Jacksonville we weren't that team from the Colts game they kind of were and and this was the first game where they really proved they were who they say they were and they were aggressive they were gutsy they were led by an MVP caliber quarterback like they were all of those things and, and it was a well coached it was a mature approach it was that resiliency that we, they've talked about of, you know, next man up, they, they were all of it. They were, Mike, they were, um, depth is great until you have to use it. And they had an offensive line that was put together with scotch tape and without two of their, you know, starting three wide receivers, that was a gutsy, gutsy road win. And Jenna, yeah. you were down there on the field. Yeah. You know, what did you see? Because you get a view, like you and Dan get that view during a game. Where, well, Dan, we know, like in Jacksonville, <laughs> they didn't just lose. That wasn't the team. Jenna, what you see from the Patriots-Bills game from, from the Bills side during that game? Yeah, I mean, I think we talked about in the car after the game of, like, it's a hostile environment when you go into Foxborough. I think the fans kind of showed up a little bit later. They're not used to having a lot of 1 p.m. late December games. But you know what you're going to get. It's that arrogance of saying, hey – you haven't won here in 20 years. Look, I know the Bills obviously swept New England last year, but pan fans were in the stands for that. It was, some might say smug is probably the term that comes to mind. Um, but yeah, it's that, it's, and, and I understand why Patriots fans would feel that because of the big brother, little brother rivalry that it's been. And at points, the, the Bills were able to shut down the crowd, completely silence them. Fans were leaving early after they drove down and scored that final touchdown. And that is something I've never seen before. It was cool because I think for Bills fans, they were there weren't that many of them there. There really wasn't. I don't know if it was because it was the holiday, not traveling or yeah. whatever. But that was a crowd that was primarily Patriots fans. And to have that crowd go silent, certain points, Pats fans were losing their mind at some of the calls by the refs or no calls by the refs. But I think it's just for your psyche – if you're the Bills, going there, beating them, essentially controlling the game for the entirety of what they did, that's just huge down the line. Like, you can say, hey, guys, this game is not too big. We beat them here last year. You Good can point. use that as an example. And, Dan, I just think that's so huge for, like, mentally where this team is at now, what it means for the future, but also what it just says about the AFC East, too. Well, this proved and showed that that was a – division, the defending divisional champs kind of a performance. Like, yeah. yep. we've been in these big games. We've done this. Whether, you know, even going back to 2019, Mike, where you said they, they came up close. You We talked about the week before. They came up close in Foxborough. Then, you know, they they 
even though there wasn't, oh, you know, there was nobody in the stands last year on Monday night, they still just blew the doors off of Belichick. And I know it was a different team, but there wasn't that intimidation factor, like Jenna says, of like going into the Death Star, the evil empire, and being like, oh, we've got no chance. It was like, no, nah, we're the division champs last, you know, reigning division champs. This is still our division until you yeah. take it out of our hands. Yeah. And Jenna, you mentioned about, you know, not being a lot of Bills fans there. It's never been that place. It's no fun to go to Foxborough. Now, you know, it's you and I went out. We went to dinner there afterward. It's kind of cool what they've built up. Yes. But that's if you're a Patriots fan, you're going to hang out there. Yeah. It's never been a destination. It's also never been a fun place in the last two decades for Bills yeah. fans to go because they would lose there every year. Yeah. yeah. I think what they did with this win and last year, they made it safe for Bills fans to travel to Foxborough and go play. Right. I, you know, they go to Jersey because you're playing the Jets. They go to Miami because the weather's good. They went to Foxborough like now you got next year you go. Eh, maybe we can go to Foxborough because we got the better team. Yeah. No, I completely agree because we say it's hostile for the Bills players, but like it's hostile for the Bills fans in some <laughs> instances as well. But I mean, I got the video that I posted on Twitter. I'm like, I know you tweeted. We actually posted on the Buffalo Plus channel of just Bills fans chanting and then panning across and Patriots fans kind of just being like, oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Well, and it's funny yeah. how much has changed. And we talk about like Mike, one of your mic drops from our Buffalo Plus show on Thursdays was about like, the week to week we've always talked about, like in the beginning of the season, the Patriots were dead. Then they were dark horse Super Bowl champs. Then it was Mac Jones. You know what? Watch out. He could be the next Brady. This is going to be, you know, all of a sudden the division runs back through Foxborough. And now the last two weeks, it's like, what are the Patriots? And the yeah. Bills now are the team that has kind of rounded into form. And I always remember last year when it was the Bills defense and they were struggling and struggling and struggling. And I always remember Leslie Frazier would come on the Zoom calls being like, we're going to be okay. We're going to be like, give us some time. We want to be playing our best football in December. That's what he always kept saying yeah. all the time. And right now the bills are playing their best football of the season. Yeah. I will say, um, like I've seen some things on Twitter, like the, the AFC East now runs through Buffalo for the next 20 years. Like all of that. I think obviously this bills team is a more talented team than the Patriots. That's not, a, that's not a hot take at all, but it reminded me when I was driving to Foxborough, it was like objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. <laughs> Because I was like, that is the case. Like the Patriots, we thought they were going to be rebuilding for a while. It turns out that they're, I don't know if you want to say ahead of schedule, but at the same point, it's a well-constructed roster. And obviously they're a very competitive team. Um, but just to go in there and get that win and to see like, Mike, I thought you put it best of if you were a Pats fan, you're like, who's that number 19? Because Isaiah McKenzie just was all over the field on Sunday. If you looked up his route tree from that game, he he ran for like miles and miles. And miles. He was literally all over the field, 125 yards, 11 catches. I'm like, what do you think this Bills team does? Because Cole Beasley is expected to be returning at least somewhat soon off the COVID list. He is obviously, Beasley hasn't been himself this season, but he's still a veteran and, and shown that presence and has stepped up in, in certain points throughout the year. What do the Bills do with McKenzie? Yeah, I, I would tell you this. I think it is uh, imperative that McKenzie stays on the field. Now, that doesn't mean Cole Beasley doesn't play because yeah. Cole Beasley can still absolutely help you on the field this year. Yeah. You are not looking sideways at any guy who can help you because with COVID, one, you don't know, injuries you don't know. Plus, it's Cole Beasley. If for a moment we can take out the nonsense that's going on this year, you know, with, you know, him on social media and all the stuff that's annoyed the team and the hundred thousand dollars in fines, all that stuff, I believe might signal an end to his time at the end of the year in Buffalo might, it's sort of trending that way, but that doesn't mean you don't get him back on the field and he can't help you. But Dan, mm -hmm. I think what McKenzie showed everybody was not only can he do some of those things, he was running routes that Beasley doesn't run. He was getting down the field more. He caught everything in that game. Not that you expect 11 for 125 out of him every week, but you better believe Atlanta, the Jets, and whoever they meet in the playoffs is going to be checking out where 19 is on the field. Yeah, yeah I think we talked about the podcast last week just being like the fact that like 
Dable had a little bit of that wild card up his sleeve with mm-hmm. Gabe Davis out and with Cole Beasley out. Like there's so many times where you can look and say, this is what this player does well. So, you, you know, that's what Belichick does. So, you know, has done an incredible job at is taking away strengths. I don't think anybody really knows what Isaiah McKenzie's strengths are. I don't think Isaiah McKenzie knows what his strengths are besides crushing Chick-fil-A in Fortnite. But besides oh, that. And now he's asking for a Waffle House in Buffalo. Did you yes. see that? Oh, I saw his yes. tweet, yeah. Yeah. What, what is this, this man's diet? <laughs> well, it was funny. I was telling our, our uh, news anchor that I said, Isaiah McKenzie every night, if you guys didn't know, eats a Chick-fil-A, plays Fortnite, has a Diet Coke and a Snickers bar before he goes to bed. Like he's Breakfast like, and lunch and dinner of champions. He's got. There, there's probably not an ounce of fat on his body. And the guy is just... <laughs> As fast as can be. And I, Jenna, it was when you and I were talking to him about three years ago, if he was nervous about cuts, we're like, what are you going to do tonight? And he's like, I'm going to go home. I'm going to get my Chick-fil-A. I'm going to play Fortnite and have my Snickers and my Diet Coke. We're like, that's what you do? And he's like, yeah, I eat terribly. And we're like, that's incredible. <laughs> but can this you imagine is, if he ate well? <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. I, it might hurt is, him. <laughs> yeah, that's like true. Iverson. The, the Allen Iverson effect played better when he's hung over. Um, yeah. the, the, the fact is that this – that McKenzie stepped up in this, in this spot. And the fact of the big third down plays was was what really, you know, really stood out to me. The sense of plays that were called for McKenzie, they Mm -hmm. weren't called for Knox or Sanders or Diggs. There were a lot called for Diggs as well, but I'm saying in some big spots in that final drive, going to Isaiah designed plays where he's the first option was fascinating to me to see. Yeah, I think that trust was something. I didn't know how it would be considering he was benched a couple weeks ago and he hasn't been a huge part of that offense. But I know we talked about a couple weeks ago, like are the Bills wide receivers still a fastball, fat, quote unquote f- fastball that they, that, you know, Brandon Bean talked about coming into the season. And it's not been in the way I expected because I, you know, you thought it would be Diggs every week. You thought it would be Cole Beasley. You thought it would be Emmanuel Sanders. But I think their fastball is just in the fact that they've been able to have guys like Gabe Davis when he was on the field, like Isaiah McKenzie, some of these mm-hmm. unknown, unlikely guys that are not the ones talked about on the national broadcast, be able to kind of step into the role and use the opportunity. And Mike, that's something I think that it's it's impressed me because – you know, it, it's what is it? Depth is a is a great thing until you have to use it. But I think the Bills have been able to use their depth in a way that keeps the opposite team kind of guessing. And then at the same point, it's like, I mean, th- that's what you need. It's in the NFL. Everyone's going to get injured. There's going to be issues yeah. off the field. Like the, the fact that they had these guys play the way they have, I think, says a lot. You're right. And I've got a real hot take here um, mm. in terms of using – those guys, it helps when 17 is the one throwing you the ball. Oh, of course, yeah. And when yeah. 17 has time in the pocket to throw and How those guys have a chance throws, to get though. Some of the throws, we've seen every throw Josh Allen has made. He made some in that game. The flick of the wrist yeah. on the money, 25. I mean, I said in that one stretch, in that last drive, he was a little bit Brady. He was a little bit Mahomes. He was a little bit Lamar yeah. on the fourth down. Like, he put it all together in that game. And I felt badly. I said to Jenna, we made a big deal about McKenzie because that was the surprise. And we made a big deal after the game about what it meant for the Bills coming off that loss. But I don't think, based on the circumstances and the plays he made, Josh Allen has had a game like that in the NFL. I think because of the circumstances of the need for that team to win that game in Foxborough against the Patriots and what he's done to Bill Belichick's defense in Foxborough the last two times they've played, take out Mm -hmm. the crazy game in Orchard Park, the last two, the numbers are insane. Yeah. What he's done against them. Like he toyed with them in that game. So the point I was making is you're right. When you've got this depth and you can get these guys the ball, it's great. When you got a guy that can deliver like mm-hmm. Allen does, man, he can make he can make a good player like Isaiah look great. He can make Diggs an excellent receiver, a superstar. 
he yeah. thinks may be on his own anyhow. Gabe Davis, Beasley, all these guys. I thought the game he played when we took a step back and looked at it was just spectacular. I, I feel like it's incredible because we talked about this season after the way he dominated last year, everyone holding him to those expectations. And while the offense did seem easier a season ago, I think he, this year you really, I mean, you talk about MVP and, and what, what Allen means to this team. I feel like at this point in the season, I expect Allen to just astonish me, which is, I mean, think of how spoiled that is. But yeah. at the same point, like that, that honestly, I know I can agree with you in terms of this Patriots game was incredible. But to me, that second half against the Bucks, obviously yeah. the defense needed to do their thing. But I mean, we saw how much of a slog it was for the for the Bills in that first half offensively. And for for Allen, I felt like to put the team on his back in that game, to put the team on his back in terms of like keeping control in this game. I mean, I just think of like the pass to Diggs. I can't remember. I think it yeah. was either a third or fourth down. The fourth one in at the end of the first half where he threw it sidearm and the camera angle on the broadcast was insane. Yeah. I mean, he, he threw it this way around. A, it looked like a like a wand, like he curved a bullet, like in that movie. It looked like he threw it around a guy. It was, it was unbelievable. And then the next pass was the 22 yard laser that looked like it was still going up when it got to Diggs yeah. down the field. Yeah. And then what did Diggs um, say after? <laughs> uh, we don't know. It's he still said, being. What didn't the Merry Bills, Christmas. Bills Merry media said it was. Merry Christmas. Given, Happy holidays. <laughs> well, he was giving cars to people. Yeah, Jenny, you, you get a car. Right there. Yes, I was right. You need Diggs to point at you. Okay, also, also, everyone roasted me for my scarf in the last video we did. It is cold out, so leave me alone. Two, I have two different gloves because I like to have a mitten on because I think it's warmer. And then the hand that I use the camera on, I like to have a glove because you can have right. more control. So leave me alone. I have a matching pair of gloves. gloves. My mom knit me that scarf, so you're mean. Yeah. And by the way, I just... I, I was wondering where you you looked like you had a floating head at one point because <laughs> it, it was dark. And I was like, where's the rest of Jenna's body? <laughs> I mean, it's fair. It's, it's absurd. It's obnoxious, but yeah. warm. It is yeah. warm. And by the way, while we're uh, also clarifying things, I'm not in my normal spot. I am right now in the spot of my future grandchild. Woo! This will be where she is in a little bit. So uh, I am in a little foreign territory at the moment. Grandpa Catalana. Yeah, Grandpa, no grandpops. Catalana. Yeah, no S. We could just go straight grandpa. 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 Pops. Grandpa. Going, pops. Yeah. I don't know. Going back to Josh Allen for you yeah. know for this, just the fact of two things really stood out to me. This week when I went up to practice on Thursday, that was the day after we had found out that Gabriel Davis had tested positive. We already knew that Cole Beasley was out. Um actually we didn't know. Davis was Friday. So I went up there on Thursday and I there was still the belief yeah. that Gabe Davis was gonna be the one to step up. Yeah. And last year, the team said that their motto was to control what you can control. Remember, the Tennessee game got moved around, the Kansas yep. City game. They yeah. didn't know if they were going to play the, the Raiders game. And they kept just saying, control what you can control. And Savon Diggs said that, you know, it's no longer the case. It's pretty much now just roll with the punches. It's not a matter of if COVID hits the team. It's a matter of when, and you just have to handle it. And I thought the way that Josh stepped up in that moment, and again, he talked all week. You got to execute. You got to execute. You got to execute. You got to execute. I want to execute for Christmas. I, that, that's it. The fact what he did, and Peter King from NBC Sports uh, apparently said that Josh got into the stadium and told Isaiah McKenzie and other teammates that he woke up with violence on his mind <laughs> and that he was every single play they had to win. That was the kind of leadership that you want out of a guy making a quarter of a billion dollars. That was, mm -hmm. that was 2020 Josh Allen where – People think that, like, that roster last year was so great. Like, it was okay. Josh has put everybody on their back on a, on a weekly basis. He yeah. covered up a lot of flaws. That offensive line played well. Like, they deserve a ton of credit. Yeah. Yep. But when you have Josh doing Josh things back there, it makes everybody's job easier. Like you said, Mike. Like Isaiah yeah. McKenzie. Like, everybody goes up a level when you have that confidence. And I, I even asked Brian Dable yesterday, like, when things are going that well, does it just feel like whatever button you press or whatever number you call, like, this is going to be awesome. Like, yeah, this, this play is going to work great too. Like this play is going to work great. So it was just one of those, it was a magical performance. Well, they don't punt. They control <laughs> the ball. And I tweeted it out. Their last 15 drives in Foxborough, nine touchdowns. 
two field goals or three field goals is 12. Two uh, turnovers on downs? One turnover on down and two punts. So it was two field goals. So nine, two, two, one. So nine touchdowns in 15 drives. And those drives were sustained. They were getting the ball deep in their own territory. And I just wanted to add one thing. I'm waiting in the tunnel as the players come out. And they were crazy, the, the, the security in Foxborough. Like, put your phones away. You can't record any video here. Like, they were nuts. And all of us are like, what? But Harrison Phillips, this is nothing bad. He's saying to Allen, he put the team on his back. He's doing, you guys know the Greg Jennings. You've yeah. heard the lines in it. That's what they were doing, talking about. Oh, they had a lot of things to say coming off the field. I mean, they yeah, were enjoying, enjoying they were absolutely enjoying themselves. But you guys both mentioned, put the team on his back. That's absolutely what he did. And I believe somebody had Josh quoted as saying, who did these guys think I was? Going back in his locker. Yes, yeah, Matt yeah. Fairburn from uh, The Athletic said that. <laughs> who, do they, who do they think? Who did, did they, they forget think? who I was? Yeah. yeah. And Jenna, yeah. to this point of where they are now, like – the reality, I think, in Foxborough is, look, Mac Jones is a rookie. I don't know how good he's going to be. Yeah. This doesn't bury him. He had no. a big, you know, Josh had bad games as a rookie. Yeah. The difference is the physical talent that Allen has. Exactly. But when we look back to when he was a rookie, like there were doubts just because he hadn't done it yet. So doesn't mean all these things, and they might meet him in the playoffs anyhow, but at the moment, it's a chasm between those two. Yeah. And that's the advantage that the Bills have. Yeah. All right. You mentioned the playoffs. Let's get into the good, the bad, the ugly, and maybe the scary in terms of the playoffs. Because the AFC, we know, has been – it has been a sprint to the finish since the beginning. I feel like you look at the – what is it? The Chiefs have won eight straight. They look like they're going to lock up the one seed. But even the Titans have been winning. I mean, don't look now, but the Dolphins have been on a seven-game win streak. The Colts are good. Obviously, the Bills in that mix. Like, I mean, Mike, what do you, what's your breakdown of matchups? Because we know that that can, that can dictate the entire game. No doubt about it. It can. Uh, I'll start with the good. Uh, Miami would obviously be the good. I mean, they handle the Dolphins. It, you know, Tua, they've won. You can't, it's hard to win seven games in a row in this league. Especially if you lost seven. Yes. And it hasn't been murderer's row here. The, The only somewhat decent team is Baltimore. I mean, they beat the Jets twice. They beat the Giants. The poor Saints team was a disaster. Like all that. But they did win seven in a row. Yeah. I think the other good is the team they just beat. With Mac Jones playing, like, yeah. I'll take my chances with the Patriots yeah. again yeah. based on the quarterback and, you know, how Allen has done when it's, you know, decent weather. Uh, and honestly, I would say <laughs> matchup-wise, matchup-wise, I, I still I like him against the Titans without Derrick Henry, Henry. I like him against them. I, I still think the Bills are better. I don't ne- it doesn't necessarily concern me as much matchup wise with Kansas City, except that Kansas City is Mahomes and Andy Reid, and they are that team. But in yeah. terms of that, uh, I would say I'll put Kansas City more in the heading towards bad just because they're Kansas yeah. City. Mm-hmm. Ugly to me is the Colts yes. right now who they're matched up against just because mm-hmm. I just I, – I don't like the way they play against – you know, for the Bills. And I think that's a real thing with that offensive line. And that right now, if I'm not – am I not mistaken? Right now, that's the matchup, right? Let me take a look. thought I it was the, the – pa- Bill- I, I think the Bills are for – the Colts are ahead of the, the Patriots because oh, they yeah, beat right. Yeah, they are, yeah. Yeah, you're right. So that's the four or five game. And by the way, the Patriots are no lock to be in because if the Dolphins win out, win Dolphins yeah. control their own destiny. If yeah. they win out, even if New England beats Jacksonville. Yeah, what about the Bengals, Mike? What do you make of the Bengals? That's that's a really interesting one. They've got a lot of talent on that team. They do. But they've been way up and down at times. <laughs> oh, that uh, sounds familiar. <laughs> yes. But uh, you know, no that's a no pressure team to play in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting i still again would take my chances with them as good as burrow is yeah because they haven't been there but i you know it's i mean the one like i said in my order just i don't like the matchup with the colts and the chiefs are so good and i do i just think the division teams are better for the bills yeah colts are colts are a terrible matchup um 
Titans again would like, to, I think they'd like to get another shot at them. I still think mm-hmm. that defense has some issues that the bills can exploit. It's funny. I look way more of the matchups of offense, um, the opposing offense against the bills defense. You know, I really don't, you know, that we've seen what they've done against Baltimore. Obviously they're a total wild card with all the injuries and COVID yeah. that they've had um, things like mm-hmm. that. I'm with you, Mike on Miami, New England, some of those fringe teams, again, there's a lot that can be shuffling around in these yeah. last these last two weeks. Um, the Chargers, I don't think is a is a bad matchup. I know they're they're again in the fringe team. The Raiders are also in the mix a little bit. Those teams that in my head are more pass happy, more spread off. I'm not as worried about them. And I know that seems weird once Trey White's gone down, but these are teams that this Bills defense is still built back front. Meaning yeah. it's still Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. And like yeah. they, they still have not gotten picked apart since Trey's gone out. And I know it hasn't been that long and they haven't faced it'd be a decent test, I guess, on Sunday against Matt Ryan, who's you know seen a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but I still think that this defense is still built to stop more passing attacks. That would be the 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 one yeah. question mark would be with the Bengals just because of how good Jamar Chase has been mm-hmm. is, is is matching up uh with him. But besides that, I'm with you, Mike. The the Colts are just a terrible terrible matchup against a team that is playing really, really well right now. Yeah. It'd be interesting if that game was, if they played a game at Lucas oil stadium on Sunday, what the line would be, Yeah, that would be uh whether they, whether it be bills minus one or Colts minus one, that would be a, a really close pick them game. The way that both teams are playing right now. Yeah, I agree. I think that's the worst matchup just because we've seen this run defense struggle uh, a lot and this is like historically I feel like going back a couple years now it's been a weakness of this defense and we know the defense has been playing better this year but just on the whole what the Colts have been able to do um I am not as uh relaxed about the Patriots matchup as you guys are and let me put it in the in the ways of this is just the Bills have performed well against the Patriots over these last two seasons obviously um obviously coming off the big win I just Bill Belichick in the playoffs just makes me anxious. Again, yeah, the Bills are I the better that. team. I just feel like he is a master motivator, and I just don't, I just don't love it. Um, but I, I, it's nowhere near the Colts in terms of uh, in right. terms of the fear of the matchup. But yeah. um, other How than that, the, the Chiefs obviously just because we've seen them be so good. I mean, and they're playing well. well so. yeah. yeah, they are. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean. The Patriots game would just be one of those stomach games where you're like, they should win, but ev- I think everything's just so heightened when it's you're seeing a team also for a third time. In a yep. sec- That's a lot. Well, the, the Patriots have one way of winning. It is to get out in front and to dictate yep. the game. Correct. They are they they are the 2019 Baltimore Ravens, where you just don't know mm-hmm. if they have the firepower at quarterback to come back in a game. Yeah, they are they fair. are the type of team that get up 10 nothing. If they're up on you 10 nothing at the end of the first quarter, you're you're in a lot of trouble. Because yeah. that dic- that that defense can kind of dictate what they want to do with you and the offense can just kind of bleed clock. But yeah. even the drives the Bills had, even the, the drive the Patriots had against the Bills, long drives. They didn't give up any big plays. Yeah. Big plays will kill you. Big plays are momentum swinging. The Patriots and the Bills kind of went back and forth with six thir- six minute drives. 13 play drives, all these things where you kind of went like, all right, your turn to hold serve. Like it was kind of that yeah. back and forth tennis match of, so that that's where if you can throw the first punch like the Bills did on that opening drive and McDermott Ooh. dictating that game, going yeah. forth, forth and two down. and yeah. saying, and then that made Belichick go, oh, oh shit. Like, okay, like we, now we're going to have to go for this stuff. So what was the psychological component of the oh. matchup for Belichick to have to go against McDermott? Aggressive, riverboat Sean. <laughs> riverboat Sean is great. Yeah. I, I mean, that's why that stuff. Look, there is respect. He's a great coach. But I'll put it to you this way. As much as I respect what the Bills have done, you put Josh Allen on the Patriots, you put Mac Jones on the Bills, you coach differently. Yeah. And you've got a, this guy. Doesn't take away from all that Dayball and McDermott and everybody have done with Josh and Belichick still isn't a great head coach, but you need the guys. Belichick said it. We played it this week where he was like, it takes players. Like you can have all the schemes. It takes players. 
Mm-hmm. And the quarterback has made that difference. And he makes the difference in all these playoff matchups, Jenna. He makes a difference. What teams like the Colts do is they accentuate what they have, mm-hmm. physical play and a great running back. And they kind of just say, Carson, don't kill us. And yeah. he's done a decent job he's, of yeah. that. Decent job. But when you need him, I mean, he did make yeah. a few plays against the Cardinals. I still think these last two weeks are fascinating. And Dan mentioned Atlanta. I'm not saying hold your breath in Atlanta. It's just it's a game. It, they're still technically alive, I think. Yeah. And and it's it is it is Matt Ryan. It is Kyle Pitts. Like well, you go out and roll the ball out there, you can yeah. lose. I think the reason I understand how you're thinking because we've seen the Bills struggle against bad teams. So I yeah. understand why there's like that hesitancy. The Jags, I mean, yeah. like losses okay, like Jags, that. Which, every other win, they they've won by two touchdowns. They have the right. most double digit. I t- know they haven't completely like that Jags loss and their inconsistency. That is something that is a worry. But at the same point, yeah, I believe as Josh Allen said a couple weeks ago, the playoffs start now. I think it's a different mindset for this team where they're I think at you're right. But I understand why fans would maybe be like, we got to win this one. We got to win this one, right? And it's like, of course, they have to win it. They should win it. They're better team. Yeah. But I can understand why there's always that um, that that bit of in the back of their mind, like, ooh, okay, let's see how this goes. Yeah. 14 point favorites says me going, that's a lot, that's of, a points. lot of points. Yeah, that is a yeah. lot of points. I kind of like the Falcons to keep it within two touchdowns. Yeah. We'll see. But the, the, the Bills should win that one. All right. Mike, Let down spot. Huh? the old letdown spot it's tough to is you don't usually have letdowns week 17 yeah i was gonna say i don't if this game was last month i would be worried like i would be like uh this is not just it's right you're right it's right in front of them now yeah we we didn't work this hard to go play lousy the thing you worry about and everybody worries about is all week covid this covid that covid this covid that it can change the makeup of any team it could impact the Falcons too. So let's just wait and see as we get closer to Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday, which will be in 2022, obviously. Yeah. You know, New Year's is coming up. Mike, you mentioned Bill Belichick. And there was I like I cringe and I like I, I get anxious talking about asking Bill Belichick what his New Year's resolution is. Well, it, especially and now we're gonna play it. The the, the we've fun. all been in there. The silence when no one starts to ask a question. Well, go yeah. ahead. Let, let them let them know. Hi. Um, football aside, sorry, but I'm doing a story about New Year's resolutions, and I was just wondering if you had any you wanted to share with your fans and our readers. Yeah. No, not right now. Okay. Thanks. It's so painful to watch after a, after a crushing division loss at home. She deserves about, a raise. She deserves a raise. Whoever she first is. First of all, if anybody had a sense of humor, and by the way, uh, let me get one more shot in on the um, some of the Boston media, where the difference with us, and I think most of the people, is like first thing I was saying and we talked about was like, Hey, they may be playing this team again in two weeks. They don't need to bury them forever. Yeah. You right now took advantage of the division, but one slip up and it goes the other way, yeah. as opposed to the things of 20 years, it's back and the whole part about it is. But if you're in that media room with Belichick, I would give anybody credit to begin their next question with football side. You couldn't pay me enough money. You could literally say a million dollars and be like, nope. I have so much respect for her in the sense I of- do too knowing this is probably going to go south <laughs> in a real hurry. I don't think she felt that, though. She I, said, I, no, think, no, no. I, I think she was unaware. No, 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 no. She said sorry. Like, you listen to it again. She yeah, says, but, 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 football but question but aside, sorry. Like, like, that room, it's rare when anybody asks a non-game yeah, but you can, question. You can pick up on vibes, Mike. You're yeah, talking I know. in a room where everyone's silent. They just came off a loss, and like, thank you. That wasn't a gaslighting. Like, he's quote. like, um, I'm sorry. I yes. have to ask you this that, question because my editor is telling me we're doing a story. Oh, I would have said, 
I would have said they told me he will not. You know, like, I'm not. Well, asking. Mike, yeah. Mike, I would ask a question on a Wednesday. Yeah. Let yeah. alone. But again, the the fact this wasn't a gaslighting question. It was almost you could see it in her face, like oh, this is going like to be this, this is going to yeah. be bad. Do you, uh, do you gonna actually answer? I don't know. I don't know. He did no, a were just, the media a couple weeks ago. Maybe it's just, if you were just asking it to get a no comment, it. like, you know, we see it in politics all the time. They ask the question, you know, they're not going to answer it, but they have to ask it. You did not have to ask him for his new year's resolutions. My guess is that. one of his resolutions would be to play better defense against Josh Allen. Right. That might be a thing. Um, but yeah. Hey, yeah, ooh, that just it, it, cringe the cringe. Huh. So all right. right. So so what's ours? So let's let's so talk. Start. Yeah. I make a resolution to work on Fridays. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh come on! It's a no. joke, Michael. <laughs> I make a resolution to talk a little less. Well, then Buffalo Plus is going to be ruined. Yeah. No, we love I you for your say takes. Stop talking. Then who's going to comment? What's everybody going to comment? Oh, no. Yes, where they're going to say, I want more Jenna, less of that guy, Catalana. No I, one says that. They say oh, less they just did in this, this one. It was My like, resolution is to talk more. How about that? Look at this. This works. Yeah. Symmetry okay. here. All right. So I'll, I'll give a real one. That That's a possibility. I My New Year's resolution is to get the point across more that – People need to, Bill's fans need to appreciate Brian Dable while he is still here. There we go. Dan, I think that <laughs> I, I, think I you really beat that drum anyways. Though. I am gonna I'm gonna keep beating this drum. This is this is a guy that, that the offense has struggled this year. The offense has struggled sixth in points in yards per game, third in points per game. It's ridiculous that Brian Dable has become the scapegoat for Everything that has gone wrong offensively this season, whether it's injuries, whether it's players regressing, because guess what? Not every single player continues to go yeah. like this. But I heard that Josh Allen was going to take was taking a step back and that he's regressed and that last year was a fluke. And none of that is true. Brian Dable is still one of the best offensive coordinators in the league, one of the best in-game play callers. He showed that. He's the first OC I know. And I asked him and I tried. And guess what? And he says the players get all the credit on the field. 100% right. But when I said how good Brian Dable coached and had 33 points on the road in Bill Belichick's house and didn't punt in that game, I still got some people in my mentions going, well, they were, um, they did not convert in the red zone two times, you know, <laughs> because Brian Dable dropped that ball that went through Emmanuel Sanders' hands. Yeah. Like yeah. that is what the lunacy that, that I've seen. And I've seen people fire Dable signs. I've seen them on TikTok. I've seen them on Twitter. It's insane. The yeah. guy is so good, and my New Year's resolution will be to get more people to respect and appreciate Brian Dable because he is incredible for what what Mike you tweet out too. What he's done for Josh's that's development. That's what yeah. I was going to say. Now, while I still have a few days to talk, um, I I will tell you this: it's what he's done to take this mold, this clay of Josh Allen. Yeah. Do people forget who he was in 2018? And I'm not saying I said. Josh is an extremely hard worker and immensely talented. Self motivated. But he yeah. could have easily. Oh, Jenna, you hear that? Didn't you hear the sirens? It's like. Is that I'm... a siren? Yeah, I know. It's not me for once. I know. Uh, what he's done for him. Josh Allen literally says, I love Brian Dable. Like they are tight. Mm -hmm. It's family, but he was tough on him in the beginning. And he still has moments when he's tough on him. Josh embraces tough coaching. Dable knew how to do it. And it's not all on Brian Dable. Ken Dorsey deserves credit. Yeah. Palmer, Jordan Palmer deserves credit. All those yeah. guys. But it begins with Dable. And mm -hmm. if fans, look, if, if Dable would have left this year and they would have struggled in the ways they did, it would have gotten blamed on Dable leaving. Yeah. Right? This is what it yeah. is. We always look for something. And it's like, Dable's great. I think he's getting a job. I still believe if a team is smart, him. he's getting a job. You got a quarterback, Jacksonville, maybe he's getting a job. Mm -hmm. um, Chicago. Chicago, yeah. all those places. But it, it's funny. Well, Jenna, it's easy. It's play calls. Nobody blames Leslie's great. Yeah. Sean's basically a de facto coordinator with him. But nobody really blames. The only thing they say on defense is you should have blitzed tomorrow. 
I mean, yeah. that's most what most fans say, but yes. Uh oh, get that uh, GoFundMe going. Yeah, I, and that's that, that's exactly too. And like I said, when somebody goes, well, they you know they they still had some red zone issues. And again, Josh was <laughs> incredible. Josh was amazing, and he had some backyard football plays. But you go back to some of these games, and I go, it's almost not fair at times to criticize Josh. It, it's almost like he's become untouchable. Like you can't say Josh had a bad game. And guess what? There were times this year that he had bad games. He yeah, played happened. bad against he played bad against the Colts. It probably didn't matter because that game they got run over. He played bad in Jacksonville. And yeah, again, I'm not sitting here saying Brian Dable's never made a bad play call. Anytime yeah. he runs the ball on first down, I sit there and I, I question myself for a split second, for a split second, and then I come back to trusting Brian Dable. But he is just what he has done is just been it was a masterful. I said I go I thought this would be Brian Dable's symphony, and it was. That was the best game that he called. Everything worked. Yeah. By the way, one last thing I was going to say. The fourth down play that Josh ran for the first down probably wasn't a great play call. No. Because New England had that play. That was great defensive play call. They had two guys there, and Allen made the play. Yeah. Sometimes it's the guy making the play. The players. And when you throw it to Emmanuel Sanders in the end zone, who usually has great hands, and he drops it, it's not the play call. It's the exactly. play. This is yeah. what, what about happens. Jake Kumaro being wide open on the one Josh play? Josh just missed him. He missed him. He just missed him. Yeah, it, it happens. happens. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, what did Josh say? Quarterback is science and art. Like it's, yeah. it's a little mix of both. Um, I also misunderstood the assignment because I thought there were like resolutions the Bills would want to have in 2022. So I put this as like, you know, how my resolution for 2021 was to floss more. And <laughs> I, I have small resolutions, small. So I, I had as the Bills, like my equivalent of like, I'm going to get abs in 2022 is using less cliches. In a oh, conference. so that's the pie in the sky right <laughs> yeah. resolution that I don't think will happen. But if I have to hear the players on that side of the ball get paid too, as many times as I heard it this year, I might lose yeah. it. Might yeah. Lose it. Okay, so for Jenna... 2022 is going to mean some form of mic flat, mic stand, yes, matching gloves, and a car. Mic stand. We're going to start small. I okay. have matching gloves, okay, people. <laughs> I just think a mitten is warmer on one side, and the hand I can wear a mitten on, I'm going to wear a mitten. And that scarf is absurd, but my mom knit it, and I'm not. I'm too scared of Val Ooh, to tell her I'm not going to wear it. Yeah, don't mess <laughs> with Val. It's too scary. All right. We, uh, we appreciate you guys listening. As always, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You know what? That'll be a resolution to say subscribe more. That should be the, our viewers' resolution. If you, oh, if you oh, haven't oh, already, but it's best. like I'm it was the num Buffalo Plus was the number one Christmas gift this holiday season. I don't know if you guys knew that. It was incredible. Yeah. Gave it to it all was. my family. All my family and friends. I spent so much on this for you. Yep. <laughs> Just go around to everyone's phone and your family and hit subscribe. I might have done that on my parents' phones. Um, we always have fun with this, but so we appreciate it. Um, we're going to have a busy week ahead as the Bills get ready for the Falcons. Dan and Mike will be at the game. Um, yeah, please be feel feel free to leave a comment of other stuff you want us to talk about in terms of the Bills, if they, you guys have any questions or anything. We're going to wrap it up here because Dan needs to mix in a nap. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We hope you all have a happy and safe New Year's. We'll see you later this week. Thanks for watching the Buffalo Plus channel. And if you're listening, thanks for listening to the Buffalo Plus podcast. Please be sure to subscribe. For Mike and Dan, I'm Jenna. We'll catch you next time.